Joining us now is another woman who is apparently ready to tell her story. I'm joined by Democratic Congresswoman Diana DeGette of Colorado. Uh, Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us. We were just told uh, that you have a story to tell. We have not heard it. But the question is, have you been harassed in Congress? Well, I, I think that many members of Congress, certainly professional women, have been harassed over the years, and I'm certainly no different. What strikes me in this conversation is that um, a lot of my colleagues and others have said this is going on, but they, they, don't, they seem somehow still reluctant to say who did it. And I don't, um, I, I don't really understand that, because it seems to me that it's, it, particularly if those people are still in Congress or whatever the profession is, then they're still getting away with it. And um, I don't think my story is much different than most professional women. When I was a young lawyer, um, I, didn't I didn't have a lot of ad untoward advances, but I had situations. I'd be at a dinner. Someone would put their hand on my knee a couple of times. Um, when I was a young congresswoman, I was um, at a diplomatic dinner, and one of the French diplomats tried to put his hand up my dress. You can imagine the shock when you're sitting at a dinner like that. And then, some years ago, um, uh, I was in an elevator, and then Congressman Bob Filner tried to pin me to the door of the elevator and kiss me, and I pushed him away. And of course, some years later, he left Congress. He became the mayor of San Diego, and then he had to leave that position for harassing younger women. And what really concerns me is that these men who are in positions of power, like Congressman Filner, Filner I mean, I was his colleague. He couldn't take action against me. And believe you me, I never got in an elevator with him again. But what concerns me now, which could, should concern everybody, is what about the young staffers? What about the interns? Was this happening with them, too? And I think we have to ask ourselves the question, is this happening with, with current members of Congress? Uh, Al Franken, I thought, very appropriately apologized and said that this, his future should be decided by the Ethics Committee. But if there are other people, we need to know who they are. So why don't you think your um, colleagues are, are naming names in this scenario? What's stopping them? I, I don't know, but this is the problem that we've had all along, is, uh, is when these advances happen, they're brushed under the rug. This is one reason why I think it's so important that we update our, our House employment rules, because always in the past has sort of been referred to this committee, and then it just sort of is swept under the rug. But if there are people who are sexual predators in Congress right now, we need to know who they are. Have you heard so any we names? Can have... I'm sorry? Have you heard any names of, of, of potential sexual predators that are in Congress? Well, some of, some of my colleagues are saying that, that some of the people who are doing this are still there. I don't know who they are. I haven't heard names. But frankly, Given what happened to me, uh, I'm not surprised to hear it. Um, Al Franken, do you think that the allegations are against him, um, warrant him resigning? Well, th this is something that we have to decide. And that's why I think it's very appropriate that the Senate Ethics Committee decide what should happen. If these things had happened now, while Senator Franken was a senator, then I think probably he should resign. But I think that the, the Ethics Committee should investigate it and decide, what do you do with somebody who had, um, who had, who, who did things before they were this, in the Senate, and what should the repercussions for that person be? And I'll tell you what, with the Alabama election coming up, I think the voters of Alabama need to say, do we want to elect somebody now who had a whole pattern of misconduct many, many years ago, but it still impacts his whole electability, I think. The, there's one woman, um, NBC hasn't confirmed her story, but she told CNN that um, Al Franken uh, grabbed her behind at the Minnesota State Fair while they were taking a photo. That was while he was senator. Yes, I, I heard that allegation just today myself, and that's what I think the... 
the ethics committee needs to investigate and decide whether that's true. Um, if Alabamans decide that they do want Roy Moore um, as their senator, do you think that he should serve? Well, I, I, I think that the Senate's going to have a big problem deciding what to do with Roy Moore, and I think that Mitch McConnell and the Republican leadership need to decide that. Uh, they, they, um, you, you, on the one hand, they say that they believe these women, and the other hand, uh, they, they don't know what to do with Roy Moore, and it's going to be a real problem for them. But now, uh, I think that we have, ever since Donald Trump was elected president, with all of his checkered background, I think that our awareness in this country has grown about these practices and how they happen. And, and so I think the voters of Alabama will really have a, a test to decide whether they want to elect somebody who has obviously gone far beyond moral boundaries in his life. Congresswoman Diana DeGette, thank you very much. Appreciate your Thanks. time. Thanks. Great to be with you, Katie. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.